Customer service done right can be your company's single biggest competitive advantage. Welcome to the customer service revolution. Join customer service authority and best-selling author John DeJulius as he interviews leaders who are revolutionizing their industries. This is more than a podcast, though. It's a movement. The customer service revolution is a radical overthrow of conventional business mentality designed to transform what customers and employees experience. If you are a revolutionary customer service leader who's ready to stop competing on price and obsessed with building a brand that people cannot live without, this podcast is for you. Need help getting brilliant at the basics? Contact Claudia at thedejuliusgroup.com and find out how the team of consultants at the DeJulius Group can help you get there. Welcome, revolutionaries, to the Customer Service Revolution podcast. I am John DeJulius, Chief Revolution Officer of the DeJulius Group. Today, I sit down with Juan J. Singh. Juan is president and CEO at Zingtree. Zingtree is an AI-powered customer experience automation platform that helps businesses improve customer service agents' productivity through artificial intelligence. Before we get to our interview, let's talk about what's happening in customer experience and employee experience in the news. Major corporations like Walmart, Delta Airlines, T-Mobile, Chevron, Starbucks, Nestle, and AstraZeneca have enlisted the services of a company called Aware to oversee conversations among their employees, the company reports. This is a little creepy and, and bothers me a little bit. Jeff Schumann, co-founder and CEO of Aware, the Columbus, Ohio-based startup, justifies this approach, saying how the AI technology helps companies understand the risk within their communication. Schumann says, getting a read on employee sentiment in real time rather than depending on an annual or twice per year survey, using the anonymized data in AWARE's analytical product, clients can see how employees of certain age group or in a particular geography are responding to a new corporate policy or marketing campaign. Schumann continues, AWARE's dozen of AI models built to read text and process images can also identify bullying, harassment, discrimination, non-compliance, pornography, nudity, and other behaviors. Hmm. AWARE has reported that its database holds messages accounting for approximately 20 billion unique interactions among over 3 million employees. Annually, AWARE produces a report based on the collection of information gathered. In 2023, the tally reached 6.5 billion messages sent within major corporations, calculating potential risk factors and assessing the mood within the workplace. Basically, what AWARE is doing is it's, it's, it's monitoring employee communication, internal Slack, Teams, Zoom. Anywhere, email, anywhere employees can communicate internally. Schumann says it's always tracking real time employee sentiment and it's always tracking real time toxicity. Judah Williams, co founder of AI Accountability Nonprofit Humane Intelligence, told CNBC a lot of this becomes thought crime. She added, this is treating people like inventory in a way I've not seen. And Amba Koch, executive director of AI Now Institute at New York University, has serious concerns about the practice of using AI in this way. She says it results in a chilling effect on what people are saying in the workplace, adding that the Federal Trade Commission... Justice Department and Equal Employee Opportunity Commissions all have expressed concerns on this matter, though she wasn't speaking specifically about AWARE's technology. 
She says these are not as much worker rights issues as they are privacy issues. I personally am shocked that any business would think this is okay and ethically a right to audit internal employee communication. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. And we'll be right back with our interview. Are you still guessing at ways to improve your customer satisfaction scores or how to hire and keep the best talent? Stop guessing and become knowledgeable. Join the Customer Experience Executive Academy and learn what the world-class companies already know. At the Customer Experience Executive Academy, you'll learn the methodology applied by world-class companies to create consistent, memorable moments that lead to happy customers and happy employees. Visit cxea.org or contact Claudia at thedejuliusgroup.com for more information on how to enroll. Welcome back, revolutionaries. Today, we are interviewing Juan J. Singh, president and CEO of Zingtree. Zingtree is an AI-powered CX automation platform that helps B2C enterprises automate action, self-service, and agent effectiveness. Welcome, Juan. John, thanks for having me. Look forward to the conversation. Me too. Uh, where, where's home? So I'm based in uh, Palo Alto, California, right oh, next to Stanford, of course. Uh, close to San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and good. And I see that you are quite a tennis player. Well, in my head, I think I am. But the reality is, uh, you know, there's a lot of amazing tennis players better than me. So, yeah, so I'm not out there, you know, playing in the Miami Open right now. Well, I could sort of relate, but I'm sure you're a much better tennis player than I am baseball player. But I'm about to turn 60 and had to retire from baseball last July. I was still playing, but had to get shoulder wow. surgery. So, but I, Man, I you was, age well. You age well, John. Thank you. Thank you. You know, something else we have in common, sort of, is my middle son, Cal, who works for me, went to American undergrad in Georgetown for a master's. Wow. And you went to both. Yeah, so I went to, you know, Georgetown Prep High School. It's the oh. oldest graduate Catholic high school in the country. Okay, where's that? It, is that it, it's, in D.C.? It's in, it's in the oh, D.C. So it's, area. It's kinda, yeah, okay. It's associated with Georgetown. It leads into Georgetown. So I went to Georgetown Prep for high school and went to American for my undergraduate school. Okay, cool. Very cool. Great schools. Expensive as hell. Wasn't happy about that. I actually offered my son, Cal... $150,000 cash not to go. Uh, and, and as you up, know, I would have saved 150000 <laughs> Did he have a good experience? At, uh, he had a great experience. And where is he now? He lives in New York. New York. Okay. And he's a consultant at the DeJulius Group. God, that's awesome. That's great. Let's get into it. I'd love to talk to you about all these other things. But tell us, uh, our, our listeners, basically, in, in, in layman's term, what Zingtree does. Yeah. So, you know, let me start with the problem. You and I, you know, you've been looking at the CX space. Consumers, you know, what do they do? They buy a product or a service. And um, when they run into an issue, what do they do? They either make a phone call to the company's support line. They, you know, maybe interact with the chat bot. Yeah. Uh, or they go on the company's website to try to see if they can find some answers to resolve their issue. And, during that whole experience, we have learned for many, many years now that it is a huge challenge for customers to have a seamless experience. If you look at the data and stats in any kind of report that's out there, you see that majority of the consumers have do, do not have a great experience when they are trying to resolve an issue. So that's where Zingtree comes in. You know, we want to be the platform that is able to identify that issue and resolve it in a seamless manner. And instantly for the consumer. So we are a CX. And so are you using it through chat box? Uh, 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 yeah, chat box because bots, because obviously the first generations of chat bots weren't good. And I think a lot of people have a, a, a bad taste in their mouth, both consumers and probably companies. So if someone's visiting my website, and one, you know, and 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 I'm I'm assuming the goal is to take care of it before they need to speak to a live agent. Is that, is that the goal probably here? 
So it depends. It depends on the types of companies and the types of use cases. And, you know, if it's a simple use case and it's a more, you know, SMB business than, you know, a basic more what business, a, a, a smaller business, an oh, SMB, smaller small, business. small okay. and mid-sized business, yeah. and a less complex business, a, you know, a basic chat bot could work. You still need to build the right foundation, have the right team managing it. It's not, you know, you flip a switch and, you know, it just works. It's not magic. Right. Though. Right. There's still work involved behind the scenes. So it really depends on the types of, you know, or if you, the other extreme is you have a really complex business and that has hundreds of systems, a ton of knowledge and ton of For compliance. example, give, give me a, a type of- uh, United business. Health Group. They're a great customer of Zinktree, one of the largest okay. healthcare providers in the world. You know, they've got hundreds of different systems. So I could be calling or or reaching out about my bill, about a follow up appointment, about, about an enrollment to a program that they administer. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a third and, party and uh, provider that they're recommending me to. Okay, so now I go to United Healthcare, and so what are you are recommending so, or having them use instead of a chatbot? So they use Zinctree, and we have different types of solution within Zinctree for the use case within, you know, different types of use cases within United. But one of the, you know, use cases could be, or any large healthcare customer, right? Uh, use case could be the patient or the members calling in, trying to figure out how do they enroll for a program that they administer. And they have questions about that program. So now the agent that's handling that call before Zingtree, they're looking at 10, 15, 20 different tabs, trying to find all the right knowledge and the right information to share that with the patient or the member. And while they do that, they have them on hold. The agent also needs to make sure that the answer is 100% accurate because they have to be compliant. If they're not compliant, they could get sued. They could give the wrong information to the consumer, the, the patient, and they could have a very ad adverse effect. So, so Zingtree, while I'm, correct me if, I, if I'm following this right, I'm the customer service rep, a call center agent for United. And as the patient is asking me something, Zingtree is, is searching for it, right? On its own, it's listening in and it's searching, kind of Googling on United's database of information to pull up that answer for me. The yeah, so that could be one way we do that. The other way is for any of our large customers, there's a, they've got a ton of data, a ton of, ton of knowledge, and yeah. it's, all these different systems are not connected with each, with each other. They put Zinktree on top of your systems, whether it's a Salesforce or a CRM. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So we sit on top of the systems. They take all the knowledge and codify it into Zinktree, into Zinktree workflows. So when this call does happen, the agent is now activated into Zinktree where they can go step by step on understanding the issue and helping them resolve the issue in a very seamless, effective, consistent, compliant manner. Okay. Good. And Good. That so that's that really so that's by that's speaking with a human and Zingtree is making the interaction quicker. I'm not making you wait as as an agent and you're the patient. I'm not making you hold on and search for that answer. And something else I, I thought of, I actually just wrote about in, in, in one of my blogs. It's more of a wish. So I got the, the salons and spas, but I also thought of this for healthcare too, is, is let's say I, I, I call up to schedule an appointment with my healthcare provider, my doctor of choice. Can, sure. and maybe this is a future thing, or maybe you're doing it now. Can it recognize that I, you know, go to Dr. You know, Smith for whatever I go to and immediately pull up his availability. So the agent doesn't have to first ask me all that information. Obviously he or she will have to know what I'm calling for. And I'm saying I need to rebook an appointment, blah, blah, blah. But you know, then it just pulls up his availability, right? Because that's kind of what I want my salon to do is uh, Juan calls and you know, whatever our software uh, besides our, uh, uh, the AI component would recognize that Juan goes to Sandy always or preferred stylist. And it would immediately pull up Sandy's opening and that would cut our appointment scheduling into, you know, uh, by 75%. Am I on the right track with this? 
hundred percent. We do that. That's a very common use case. Wow. Scheduling, rescheduling. The data is available because we're integrated with all these systems. So since the data is available, we can definitely see, hey, Dr. Smith is available on Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday in the Northeast location, Thursday in the Southeast location. Which okay. one would you like to go? And here are the times you know he or she is available. right? So we can facilitate that in a very seamless manner. On top of that, we can even give suggestions. Hey, you, I know you're going to see Dr. Smith, but John, you're seeing Dr. Smith for your ankle. You've been seeing him for the last six months. But you haven't done your physical in the last year. Yeah. Could we also schedule an appointment for you with, you know, Dr. Perry because you haven't seen her in over a year to get your physical done? So why don't we set that up as well? Yeah, I love it. I love it. All right, so that's so. Does a Zing Tree coach any empathy to the agent or slow down or you know Zing Tree doing that yet? No, we're not doing that. We're not doing any coaching. We're not doing any QA. You know, when our customers come in to us, you know, they can find us on their own, which has been phenomenal, right? Which really validates that's a real pain point and the pain is only getting worse. We yeah. see that day in and day out. So that's why customers come and knock on our doors and find Zingtree. And these are legitimate large enterprise customers like the, you know, United Health Group, Sony's, Fleet Corps, Intuit, Sage of the Worlds. And when they come to us, I, you know, they uh, understand that, you know, their data is available to them. The knowledge is available to them, but it's very hard for them to activate it. So that's where they, you know, leverage Zingtree to put all their data into Zingtree, integrate Zingtree into their core systems, and then let Zingtree's workflow activate that knowledge and put it in the fingertips of either the well, agent. You know what I like about customers. that, uh, Juwan, is, as I know you know this, Customer service reps, call center agent, whatever we want to call them, are the uh, least one of the least job satisfactions, right? And I mean, you know, a day in the life of a call center rep, you know, same questions, and you know, it, it, like in United Healthcare or, or a lot, you know, we call them grudge buys. Uh, grudge buys are people, you know, I I don't want to be spending time with. A calling for you know a bill or you know a car repair like these aren't things we want to be doing with our time so time or money and so there could be a chip on the shoulder of the customer and when you're an agent and you just keep on taking so what your your uh, zinc tree is doing is making it quicker, uh, making it a little less pain. Less because you know when I think of calling my, my our, you know the hospitals here in, in Cleveland and you know we have great healthcare system Cleveland Clinic you got to start working with them just because I know it's going to be a twenty minute call I mean it is misery and like who has twenty minutes okay but sorry that was that was just a, a statement of what I like you doing so we talked about helping collaborating with a human agent what about like what's your answer to a chat bot that I just want to go on the website, find something on United or Sony. Is there anything that can reduce the amount of calls that have to come in? 100%. I mean, actually, again, when you go back to the facts and the data, most consumers don't want to have a conversation. Right. They don't. So when they pick up the phone to call- it Depends on all... what the topic is, right? Yeah. So it depends on the topic. Like I use Apple as an example. Like, yeah. you know, when I need to get my laptop fixed or something, thing, I don't want to call the 800 number. That just seems like, but I can go on Apple, make an appointment at the Genius at the closest Apple store, probably within 90 seconds. Love that. But then when I go in and speak to the Genius, I, I call it a transfer of a uh, burden. I want to tell that genius how important I, my laptop is to me and what I do. And bl even though it doesn't matter to him, there's something yeah. about that that I do want to talk to someone about. So uh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, exactly. Right. So consumers in general, you know, by the time they, when they pick up the phone, they're already frustrated. And to your point earlier, agents are frustrated, not because, you know, they don't like taking calls. They love taking calls. That's why they're in their job, but they don't have the right data and knowledge in their fingertips to make that experience seamless for the consumer. So they get frustrated. So there's a lot of frustration going on. Uh, and hence, you know, consumers, they'd rather just have the action taken. They'd rather just have the, you know, issue resolved instantaneously. 
And that's where Zinktree is you know, going. Uh, think about this. When you're returning a product on Amazon, what do you do? Are you creating a ticket? And then is Amazon monitoring that ticket, calling you back, trying to resolve it? No. You just say, return this product, click of a button, the action is taken. Print that my, is what uh, we're building for large or, or I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, I, I forget if I print my tag, but I take it to the closest Whole Foods or Kohl's or something and drop it off. You can even have UPS or whatever, pick it up from yeah. your home. Right, 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 right. Right, but it's all instantaneous. The return, the product is returned. So, what is Zingtree? Do you do you use chatbots? What do you use so, for so the we automation part? Tools. So, part of our fuller platform is you know we started out in building out this you know kind of uh, workflow is core to what we do. Like you know we get all the knowledge and codified into Zingtree workflows, and from there because we have all the data, we we're able to not just search the larger set of data that we have, but also take action. To resolve customer issues instantaneously. So, in that same similar example of Amazon returning product, we want to be able to take action for our large customers instead of you know revolving around a ticket, resolve that issue even before the ticket is. So, so walk me through an example that with Sony, I'm a consumer, I assume, and yeah. give me a simple example of uh, how it works. On I go to Sony's website. And I'm returning whatever it is. Yeah. So let's just say, you know, for example, Sony has a robot vacuum cleaner that you can use. And we recognize that the battery on the vacuum cleaner, you know, is supposed to last a year, but it starts losing, you know, power six months into into the purchase. And you recognize they recognize that just so because what, normally it's kind of like your Tesla or BMW when it they know I need an oil change. Correct. So okay. instead of waiting for the customer to call you and say, hey, my battery's not working. I've got a one-year warranty. This product is not working. I want to return this product and get a full refund. You send a notification as a cust- as a business to your consumers in a proactive manner saying, hey, the product is working well. I'm glad you're using it every day because we have the data. Over the next month, your battery power is going to you know, degrade. So we're going to send you a new battery in the mail. It's already been shipped. It should be in your home in the next one to two weeks. And this is how you insert your new battery into your, into your robot. Okay. So that's proactive. You've deflected that call coming in. I didn't even have to anguish over how am I going to get a hold of this company. Oh, exactly. Or Comcast, for example, your Wi-Fi is not working. This is a common common use case. Okay. Yeah. So then you would call and you're like running around in circles, whether you're chatting with the chatbot and you're in dead ends, you're talking, trying to get a hold of someone. Instead, Comcast, I already know that there's no Wi-Fi in, in Cleveland because there's a huge outage. So before you call me, I can send a text to you saying, hey, John, you, you being Comcast, my, yeah. I, I get a notification on my phone, email, text saying, you know, Wi-Fi is down. It's not an isolated problem at your house. A million people are dealing with yes. this right now. We're looking into it. We're working on it. We'll give you an update in, in, in an hour. We think we can resolve this in the next hour. But we'll All right, give so you that's a- preventative. Yeah. Uh, what what if I, if I just have something that I want to add another whatever router or whatever? Do you have chatbots? What does Zing yeah, so, do? So you know, for example, for that we take whatever the agent uses, we repurpose it for the consumer. Right. So when an agent is ident- you know, identifying and resolving a customer issue, they're going through Zinc3 workflows and in a step by step guide for next best action. So we allow that to happen for the end consumer. There are some tweaks behind behind the scenes to make it more consumer friendly. But now a consumer can come in and interact with Zinc3 directly to either add a new router or to reschedule a you know, doctor's appointment. Um, or to buy a new product using Zingtree's, you know, workflow. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. If you enjoy what you're learning on the Customer Service Revolution podcast, you'll love our weekly newsletter, the e-service. It's full of great customer experience tips and stories, includes special offers, webinars, and more each week. To sign up, head to tdg.click forward slash e-service. That's T-D-G dot
click C-L-I-C-K forward slash e-service, E-S-E-R-V-I-C-E. Enter your preferred email address and you can look forward to great advice from John in your inbox every Wednesday. So, you know, it, it, it's going to be the haves and the have-nots, right? Everyone's running, you know, I think the big boys right now are running to show how much they're spending on AI and how it will change everything. But like anything, and this isn't directed at Zingtree, but, you know, like any new innovation the past hundred years, pioneers get eaten. Have you have you heard that expression? Sure. Right? And, and you know, so sometimes- yeah, Companies like Blockbuster. Blockbuster right. Uh, you know, that's the great example. Kodak, BlackBerry. Sure. But also, so, so besides that, there's a lot of players out there that we don't know, AI players out there that we don't know or trust that they're going to be around in six to 12 months. There's going to be a lot of wasted money that people are going to be throwing at it that things today may not be what's working in six months. So- how should companies who want to bring in AI, ML, and LLM, which I want you to explain in human languages for our listeners and really for me, but there's a, there's a couple of questions there. How, how does a company really decide right now, it, it, you know, going from crawl, walking and running, sticking their toe in the, the water versus just throwing? Like, it, it, I'm sure you've heard of uh, what Klarna did, right? Sure. Yeah, uh, so yeah. I think that's a great question. Let me, let me and, just uh, uh, preface for my audience. Klarna is a, uh, by now, uh, it's a financing company. And they built, I think, an AI assistant that supposedly does the work of 700 employees. Quicker, faster, better. So, but not everyone can, you know, build their own AI assistant. So somewhere, see if uh, you can uh, answer that long dissertation. Yeah, so, you know, Customers, large companies that come to Zingtree, you know, it really starts with, you know, there's some advantages for companies from the learnings that they've had in the past, right? AI, chatbots, and these kinds of automation have been around for many years. It's not anything new. And they haven't moved the needle. I mean, you've been doing customer service solutioning for 20 plus years. Question to you, has, you know, has the customer experience improved significantly? And not digital, not, no, no, it's in every aspect. Right. When you look at the backwards. data, when you look at the stats, you know, only 8% of people have an okay experience interacting with the chatbot. This is a Gardner report that came out. Yeah. Only 14% of people have an okay experience on the phone. So what does that mean? Like we spend millions and billions of dollars for 20 years on all different types of solutions and AI and all these different, you know, next gen tech. And it hasn't moved the needle in consumer experience. You can make a call today and you'll be frustrated because you didn't have great experience, right? So why is that? You know, I think we all should be asking the question, why has it not moved the needle? So when big companies come to Zingtree, right, they've gone through this journey already. They have been told 10, 15 years ago from the CEO of the board, hey, you can automate all these things. Just, you know, put it into, put all your money into chatbots. And to your point, they thought it was a flip of a switch. They thought they can jump into the deep end and everything would work. And looking back, they realized it didn't work. They've got scars from that. So this time around, what we're seeing is when companies do come to Zingtree, they are much smarter. They've learned from their prior challenges that they've had with implementing next-gen technology. And this is for large enterprise complex businesses, you know, not for simple businesses, but companies that are generating billions of dollars of revenue. They've got a lot of people, they've got a lot of systems, they've got a lot of data, those kinds of companies, right? And these are companies that are in healthcare, insurance. You know, Allianz is the largest insurance company in the world. They're a great customer of Zingtree, financial services companies, and large B2C consumer product companies like the Sony's of the world, right? So these kinds of companies, when they come to us, not this time, they're much smarter. They know it's not a hey, flip of a switch. It's a crawl, walk, run journey. And they want to come build the right foundation, build the right you know, infrastructure. And Zingtree, they look at Zingtree as the right foundation to help them take all their knowledge and codify it into Zingtree. And then AI can only juice it up for them from there. Then put AI on top of a solution like Zingtree that allows them to go on this AI journey. In a with a more more success than they've had in the past. 
So that is what we're seeing now. When large companies come to Zingtree, they've already got this framework. And this framework is based on the challenges that they've had in the last 10, 15 years, based on the lack of success they've had in implementing AI at scale in these complex businesses. Is AI going to reduce the need for labor, human labor? It depends on, again, on the use case and the complexity of that use case. There are certain things that it can help with more automation and more efficiency for sure. And then like to your point, sometimes, hey, a human needs to talk to a patient that's having going through chemotherapy and they need to know what kind of medication to take. Yeah. Or a human needs to talk. Well, with I'm not any- saying eliminate, eliminate humans, but reduce. Because even the example we talked about earlier in the episode where it's making the agents more efficient, shortening the amount of time that they're on, or the average call time booking the scheduling the appointment faster, okay? So we still need agents, but now we may not need as many because agents can do calls more rapid. So more agents can handle call more calls per hour than they were in the past, right? Yeah, so that's happening with our customers. You know, we have a you know a large enterprise customer. They had you know one of the biggest marketplaces out there. They had 2000 agents before Zingtree. They've implemented Zingtree successfully over the last couple of years and had huge impact. And now they have, instead of 2,000 agents, they only have 800 agents. And these 800 agents are able to now, even though their business has grown and has more complexity, are able to service their consumers well. And they've also allowed their end customers to use Zingtree directly, so they're deflecting costs. So we're already seeing this happen even before generative AI came into the mix. It's been happening for our customers where they're reducing the you know amount of agents they need to de- continue delivering good service to the consumers. And AI will only, like I said, will juice it up. And you know, with, with the infrastructure that we've built and the ability to take actions on top of this infrastructure, you know, to assist the agents or the end customers will allow them to do more self-service and automation without having to keep adding more headcounts. And so what we saw from Klarna, uh, not, not building their own, but you know, through a, through a, a third party like Zingtree, do you think that's going to become more common where obviously it can reduce the amount of heads? Yeah, I, I think so. But again, it, it depends also on the complexity of the business. Okay. Yeah. The more complex the business is, especially in industries like healthcare, insurance, financial services, large B2C consumer products. They've got thousands of products and thousands of SKUs. It's a much bigger challenge to be able to implement a solution that will overnight reduce human headcounts in the customer service department. But for businesses that are smaller, mid-size, less complexity, yeah, it's definitely doable much faster. So if I'm an organization working with a company like Zingtree, what KPIs are critical to evaluate that it's, it's paying off? So this is, I mean, that's a great question. And this is something that, you know, we actually advise CX leaders to look at. They get pounded right now with so many different companies, incumbents, the pioneers, new startups, raise a ton of money talking about, hey, we can reduce your number of, you know, humans in the call center. We can automate everything. So uh, really put them to the test. And I think CX leaders do a pretty good job at this because they've been, again, scarred from the past where they've been you know, sold and they trusted a solution that can deliver for them and it hasn't. So they're much more careful. I mean, for example, I like to use one of our customers, Todd Sale, he's an SVP of customer experience for Fleet Corps. They're the largest B2B credit card payment company in the world. They just changed their name from Fleet Corps to Corpe, I think today or sometime recently, and they're publicly traded. So when Todd first heard about Zingtree, he was anti-Zingtree which was great. You know, at that time we didn't like it, but he was like, Hey, why do I need this? I've talked to so many different people already. Salesforce. I have all these different systems. I don't need Zingtree. Get out of here. (laughs) He didn't say that, but that's kind of, he said that. Right, 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 right. right, right. He had a bad taste. I think that's great. Put the vendors to the test. Are they, are you real? Can you really deliver for me? You tell me you can get up and running in a day, in a week. Show me, show me you can do that. And you say, you're going to save me you know, 20% and, you know, uh, ticket deflection, you're going to improve my CSAS score by 5%. Show me signals of that. Show me. 
So I, what are those KPIs? And I know it's dependent on the industry, but is it resolution time, average? The, the, the average handle time. Okay, that's an important piece. Uh, CSAT scores, customers, you know, a lot of our customers, they want to provide better service to their customers. They want to improve the, you know, their customer I, experience. I would hope everyone in this wants day, to. In this day and age, if you mess up with the customer, they're going somewhere else immediately. Yeah. Right. So you want to provide the the right service. So the CSAT score wants to go needs to go. First time up. resolution. First time resolution. Warm transfers. This is an awful challenge in the industry. You talk to someone for 10 minutes, tell them about your all your life problems with this product. And, and then, then now you gotta explain and it to someone else. It's out of my someone else again. You're starting all over. Okay. That so how, how how does Zing Tree help with that? So when that agent initially is collecting the information or the consumers interacting with Zingtree on their own, yeah, the data is collected and is immediately transferred to the person, the next person that's trying to resolve your issue. So instead of them coming in and saying, hey, what's your name? They're like, hey, John, I see you've been seeing Dr. Smith over the right, last six right. months. So I'm, a, you know, I, uh, 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 Juwan, you're my customer. That's not my department or, you know, whatever. I can't help as a final. I'm going to transfer you to, to Denise. And when Denise picks up that phone, she sees the history on the Zing yeah. Tree. And, 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 and don't worry, Juwan, you don't have to re-explain the issue, the da 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 you know, blah, blah, blah. Denise, I will educate Denise on that, whatever, I'll, you know, however. But yeah, that that's attractive. So I would think, you know, yeah, uh, all those KPIs, you know, it, depending Average on- Average channel time, deflecting calls, warm transfers, CSAS scores, you know, these are things that are pretty common. Awesome. But at the end of the day, it's about our success is when we can really take a complicated use case and automate that for both the agent and for the end customer, where they can feel that, hey, this is very complicated, but with the click of a button through Zingtree, actions can be taken behind the scene that can give me their you know, answer I need or give me the resolution I need. We are talking to Juwan Jason. President and CEO of Zingtree, an AI-powered customer experience automation platform that helps B2C enterprises automate action, self-service, and agent effectiveness. What didn't I ask you, Juan? Anything missing? I think, I mean, uh, I'm trying Besides, to the next question will be, how do people uh, get learn more and all that, which we're going to show in the uh, have in the in the in the notes, show notes, Zingtree's uh, website. What else we can have in there? Which I, I assume is Zingtree.com, correct? Yeah, I mean, I, I would like. I think the last one I would share is. I mean, I think it's really important for people in this space to understand what is what is happening and what has happened in the last twenty years, right? Because we get that feel because. When a customer like United Healthcare comes to us, they already have all the systems in their tech stack. Why are they coming and knocking on Zingtree's door? So I think trying to really dig into that. Uh, when Sony comes to us, you know, you don't think Sony's got every technology, chatbot and CRM and CX platforms and you know automation platforms. They already have all of these. Why so you're saying you most of your new customers have already done this and, and potentially oh, yeah. have been burned or, or frustrated by it but they don't they're not getting enough of a pop right so they already you don't have, have you don't have very many customers that come to you and have not been in the ai world already yeah so like, i mean yes we do run into some early stage startups or like some smaller companies but when we look at our true icp where we make a big impact and the impact for us is how quickly we can deploy zinc tree i mean we went live with united healthcare in less than 90 days which is unheard of for, the, for that organization. And within the first 60 days after going live, they're getting 200,000 calls a day on average during the enrollment cycle, busy season. We shaved off 40 seconds on average on a call. Okay, millions of dollars of cost savings, right? You need to be able to show that kind of value. And, and that's what these large customers are looking for when they come in. Is this real? You know, I've been trying to work through these challenges for many, many years now. And it hasn't moved the needle. What else is out there? And that's how they find Zingtree online. We need to do a better job of telling these stories to the world. And we're working on that, uh, the success stories we've had. But it's truly a testament to not just Zingtree, but what these customers are going through. I mean, how can they come? We're, you know, we're not like a big company like IBM, but how do we get these big time logos 
that eventually come and somehow find Zingtree and they put us, they're not replacing a tool, they're putting us on top of their current tech stack and getting more efficiency on it, right? So that is, you know, something that drives us towards our vision. And, and, and for us, as we've learned over the years, that the whole tech infrastructure is built around tickets, okay? Everyone revolves around a ticket. In our view, a ticket is already a failure. A ticket is a failure because you can't resolve the issue right away. A right. ticket is a failure because there is lack of automation. A ticket is a failure because it's you know less integration. A ticket is a failure because there's less connectivity. Okay. So while the rest of the world in customer experience and customer service lives, you know, and thinks in terms of tickets, we believe in a ticketless world. And what does that mean? It doesn't mean that hey, we're replacing everything overnight. But we believe that we've got the right infrastructure and foundation to create more ticketless journeys, which equals to better customer experience journeys. I love it. All right. Where can they, our listeners, revolutionaries, learn more about you and Zingtree? www.zingtree.com. That's our website. And on our website, there are, I'm sure there are very many action buttons that allows you to get in touch with us or get a demo of a product. And do you have any blogs or anything you post on LinkedIn? Yes. You know, we're very active on LinkedIn. Should they follow Zingtree on uh, LinkedIn or you? Zingtree. Uh, okay. Zingtree is bigger and better than me. So yeah, I will so, post thanks. both in the show notes, LinkedIn and Zingtree.com. I really appreciate your time. I've learned a lot and I know our revolutionaries have. Thank you so much for being on this. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. That was fun. We'll be right back after this. Let's wrap up this episode with my mantra, living an extraordinary life. So countless others do. This is one of my pet peeves. This is one of my soapboxes is when you ask someone how they are doing, which we do. We ask and get asked dozens of times a day, every day. And usually what I hear is when I say, how are you? I get responses like, fine, okay, so far, so good. And it drives me crazy, right? I mean, my answer is always great, fantastic, you know, and, and, and it's true. It really is true on the grand scheme of things. We are doing fantastic. We are doing amazing. You know, look at what's going on. Just watch headline news in the different parts of the world. Relatively speaking, we are doing. On my worst day, I'm still doing fantastic. I'm still fortunate and blessed. Now, it doesn't mean suppress what you have going on uh, that isn't fantastic, but that's what you have best friends. That's what you have significant others for. And that's what you have therapists for. But the mere acquaintance, the stranger you're just meeting, someone you haven't seen in a few years, doesn't need to know about that. And I love to tell my boys and, and, and my employees, who do you think does better? Who do you think tracks better people with more energy? The ones that are doing fine, okay, so far so good, or the people that are doing amazing, and they have that energy and they, you know, can back it up if you say, well, tell me something good. So we got to focus on, we got to coach this to our employees. We got to coach this to ourselves and we got to coach this to our children. Thank you for joining me on this week's episode of the Customer Service Revolution podcast and live an extraordinary life so countless others do. Hey there, revolutionaries. Are you listening? Are you out there? We really want your feedback. We want to know if you're enjoying the Customer Service Revolution podcast. Do you like the content we've been producing? Do you like the guests that are on? If you enjoy an episode, please give us a thumbs up, write a review, send your feedback in. We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks for being part of the Customer Service Revolution. 